Now, I think what we are looking at is after the overview of the unit, what, we, what I'm trying to cover today, um, I've got two presentations in particular for learning outcome one and learning outcome two. Now in learning outcome one, what we want to be able to do is we'll start with understanding uh, this is called the organization structure and what impact does it have on the organization in general. So you will see uh, the idea of studying this would be that we will basically look at understanding uh, a particular type of organization has a particular type of culture. It is a particular type of resources or people working within that department. So in this context, what we are looking at is studying, you know, three or four different types of organization structures, which will give you a good idea. Um, one, to recognize organizations when you go and see or visit or observe that what kind of a structure they have. And then with that, you'll be able to correlate to what kind of culture they have and what type of people work within that organization. Is that okay? Yeah. So looking at, you know, um, the first presentation, is this true? Is it okay? Yeah. Now, you know, first come first, let's look at what is organizing, you know, and then we'll go to organization. So organizing is nothing but, you know, arranging some tasks and activities in a very systematic uh, manner or a fashion, which essentially allows you to achieve the organizational goal. You know, so imagine if you have to kind of tidy up your room, it, it involves a bit of organization as we call it, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to try and put together things which belong, uh, you know, together. So for example, if you're going to have a lot of shoes in your uh, you know, room, you're going to put shoes onto one side. Uh, and then if you have a lot of clothes lying around, you're going to try and put all those clothes uh, or linen together. So dirty linen for uh, laundry will go in one stack. The other will be for ironing. And the ones which are new or, you know, not worn will actually go into the wardrobe. So what you do is you basically look at organizing, um, you know, the room from a point of view of small activities, uh, which kind of help you in the overall goal of, uh, you know, kind of tidying up your room. So similarly, if we expand that as an example to looking at what organization or organizing means is nothing but a series of activities which are done in a systematic fashion within an organization which allows you to contribute or achieve a goal. Now, the example that I gave you is a personal example at home because your main aim is to basically tidy up your room, um, you know, to make it more presentable, to make it more livable. But when you look at it from an organizational perspective, if you go into your office, and you have a very untidy desk, you might end up having a comment from one of your colleagues or your boss saying that, you know, could you tidy up your desk? It looks messy. It, it looks, uh, you know, absolutely awful. So if your desk does not look neat and tidy, then it gives an impression to your manager or your colleagues that, you know, the person is not very organized. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So here, in uh, an organization, what we do is at some stage, because we work within large companies and there are lo lots of businesses which are now global, that means they have businesses and offices across ge geographies or countries, they have to have something called an organization in, in the sense which is clearly depicting who's at the top, uh, what, what role each individual plays at, at the level in which they are, and how does it overall contribute to achieving the goal. The other would be, how does the top management review if they don't know the organization in, in terms of its structure? So who's the director, who's the head of department, who's the manager, who's the employee, who's the staff? They need to know these things clearly. So within an organization, you'll normally see, even if it's a small organization or a small business or a large business, you will see that most organizations have a chart. And that chart is an organization chart, so the, which shows nothing but the structure of the organization in terms of who's at the top, what role they play, and where they report to and things like that. Is it okay? Yeah. Now, an example that we picked up is, this is a department within an organization which works or looks after something called information dissemination within a company. So if you look at, for example, Unilever as a brand, now within that, they, they, do, they have a lot of products. It's a very large company. And what they do is there is a department within their company which is called the Information Services Group. 
Now, this department has the responsibility to put out information in the forms of data and reports to all the employees at all levels. So here, if you look at, this is a simple example of how you will see an organizational chart within a department. So there's somebody who's on the top, which is a you know a solutions architect or a person who manages uh, the whole department. And then underneath that, you have different uh, you know, sub and kind of supervisors, and underneath that, you have specialist people who work within that particular function. Is that okay? So okay. here, one of the key things would be that if he's putting out information on the website, there is a manager who looks after you know the website in particular. There is an external person underneath him who works with the agency to ensure that all the information that they are getting is factual. Then there's somebody who catalogs it. Uh, and again, a person because it's a large company, so they catalog it. And finally, somebody who looks after designing and then putting it out on the website. Before he puts it out, it is approved by the supervisor and it's approved by the manager of the department before the information is put out to ensure it's absolutely factual and accurate. Now, what we're looking at is there are various stages in which organization structures uh, come up. And there are different types of structures that we want to be able to study. <clears throat> so this is a presentation, too, but we're going to take you through some of the key slides. Now, when we look at why do we have a structure, these are the features. Now, the structure is, why we want to have a structure is we want to establish a chain of command or chain of control, you know, essentially. So in the house, if you look at, you know, you have a, you know, in the in the family, when you look at, uh, within a house, you have a family, and if you look at the family, there's a husband, there's a wife, you have a few kids, you might have your grandparents and things like that. But when you look at that, you clearly, the kid or the child essentially clearly knows who, where is the chain of, chain of command, who is in control. So similarly, when you look at within an organization, the structure is basically drawn up so that it clearly depicts and is able to control and give a clear idea that means who is in control um, where and finally uh, where at what level the decision making happens in case something goes wrong who has the authority to be able to override that decision in terms of power would be the budget responsibility and the last is ultimately who's responsible uh, you know for the whole project or for the whole department and then when you look at that what we do is we can structure the organizations into functional, divisional, uh, matrix, and flat. These are four structures that we can use to depict the type of organization, uh, you know, uh, structures within a business or, uh, you know, an organization. And we end up defining some of these things, uh, you know, in one line, which we can go through at a, a bit later stage. And this is again an example. Um, how a chain of command is set up. So you have chief executive officer. Underneath that, you have another layer of, uh, you know, uh, senior management. Again, another layer, and then you have regions. So imagine this as a structure of, say, Coca-Cola. So there's somebody at the top who is the CEO, and there are, say, three vice presidents or presidents across three different regions. So you have one for Asia Pacific, one for Europe and Middle East, and you have one for North America, Americas in general. And underneath that, you have vice presidents, which basically are maybe major markets. And then within that, you have, say, Nordic region, Benelux, you know, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, things like that. And then within that, we'll have UK, France, Germany, you know, individual countries. But the chain of command in terms of reporting goes backwards in terms of a, it's like a pyramid. So there is only one or two people at the top of the organization. And the chain of command means the the line of control actually flows from top to bottom in this case. Is okay. it okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, also differentiate between you know how the chain of command is between different structures. And if you have a flat organization, now flat organizations we normally tend to find. Uh, our organizations, which are, uh, you know, American organizations in particular. But that does not mean that if you look at a large organization like Microsoft or Apple or HP, some of the big brands, 
then they will have a complex structure. But when I say flat organization, you look at small businesses, uh, say, for example, look at a small restaurant business or a, a takeaway business, the organization is quite flat. The owner is the director and has access to most of the employees directly. There are not many layers between him and the uh, employees or workers working within the organization. So he's able to direct to the, he's able to direct work to them directly, delegate work to them directly, and also speak in liaison with them on almost on a daily basis. But if you look at the large organization, what will tend to happen is that you'll have some sort of a structure which is either divisional, uh, which is a division, or it is a matrix structure, and that will come to example. So this is an example of a structure within a country. So when you look at say Gillette Packard is a company, they have a UK and Ireland office. And the UK and Ireland operations of the chief uh, you know, executive is basically within the company hierarchy called the general manager within the structure of the organization worldwide. And within that, he has this structure which is basically looking after UK and Ireland operations. So this is just to understand the, you know, the control and chain of commands when you look at from, from the aspect of looking at organizational structure. Now, when you look at the basic aspects of how organization works, and when we look at control in general, we also defined, uh, you know, five objectives. We defined, you know, things like chain of command, control, responsibility, power, you know, things like that. So here, when you look at the context of power, what we look at is there are five different types of power which can be uh, given across to a person within the organization. Now, legitimate means the power is based in one position in the formal hierarchy. That means the position at which the person is, has power. An example of this will be the president of the United States, for example. Now he is con he is in the position of power, so he has the power. But as long as the person is in that position, he or she has the power to be able to do everything. But the position itself is associated with the power. It's not Donald Trump as a president or Donald Trump as a person who has the power. It is the president and the position which has the power. Yeah. Now, coercive means power is based on fear. You normally find this as an example in, uh, say, for example, uh, in the military hierarchy. You know, so the power is based to a certain extent on fear that if you do this, if you do that, you know, there is uh, this could happen or that could happen or you could be reprimanded. Reward in general is power based on the ability to distribute something that others value. So here, when you see working within the department within an organization, <coughs> your manager will actually distribute power to you depending on your capability and your caliber. So if he or she finds that you're able to perform some tasks extremely well, then in that case, sometimes when he has to choose, pick and choose between the employees given a certain test of task uh, to do or accomplish, they will reward you with some additional powers because you have been a performing person. You have been a responsible person. Is that okay? Similarly, you have expert. Now, this is what you get to see uh, uh, for a person when they have they have con they are considered to have expertise or special skills within that field. So you get to see this in a lot of engineering organizations, wherein the chief architect or the you know, the person who is the project engineer normally is considered to be the final authority in terms of decision making because he or she is an expert within that field to be able to accomplish that task. And then you have the referent, which is power based on the identification with the person who has resources or trade. So here, what we are looking at is the person in the example here would be the example of business, wherein um, what you will look at is if um, you have a differentiation between the owner of the business and the director of the business in terms of the chief executive, what you will find is that the owner of the business gives more power because he or she is the person who has the resources in terms of money to be able to influence decisions. Yeah. So these are things that we have to learn. And if you have the understanding of these concepts, you know what are the basics of 
um, when you work, start working within the organization, you are able to form some of these pretty much instantly is because your, under, your, your understanding in terms of these terms are available uh, and it gives you a clear ad advantage from a point of view of, uh, you know, building a I'm deeply looking at a few other things. For example, you must come across a term called departmentalization. And we heard about the term called department, department. No. Okay. A simple example. Which supermarket do you go to? Uh, Tesco and Science Beach and Asda. Okay. So if you pick up any of these, you when you go to, say, for example, when you go and shop in Tesco's in particular or Sainsbury's, you normally would find that there are certain items which are kind of club together and put into an aisle. So for example, you're looking at uh, grocery items, they're in two or three aisles. If you look at milk and cheese, they're in they're, they're grouped together in one particular aisle. And if you've noticed that within the store, there are three or four different types of departments. That means three or four different types of sections within the store. One of the sections within Sainsbury could be the clothing section. One of them could be the fresh food and veg and grocery. One of them could be the wines and, you know, a couple of other things or furnishings, home furnishings. And you will also find one of the sections being a section wherein you'll have maybe a cafe, you know, or, a, or some sort of a small restaurant. Have you seen that? Yeah, different departments. That is correct, different departments. So yeah. when a business is large enough, and each of that uh, section, each of that section, or each of the department of that business is large enough to be able to run functionally on its own, then the company chooses to have something called departmentalization. Right? Yes. So if you look at a cafe within, say, for example, uh, Sainsbury, or if you look at uh, you know a particular section or department within one of these large stores. What you tend to see is that their revenue is as large as you know any other store in that area or maybe a local shop in that area. So what they tend to do is in order for these activities to be managed much more effectively uh, and have a certain set of responsibility to be able to run that efficiently, the organizations would create something called departments. And each of that department is going to be headed by say, a manager or a supervisor, depending on the size of the organization. And when you have these departments, they are, or, you know, kind of uh, grouped into different categories like product, so customer, geography, and process. So a functional department would be when you're grouping the activities where functions performed. And that is where you will see an example of um, you know, a car manufacturing company uh, or an automobile, automobile manufacturer in particular, wherein all the functions of assembly would happen on the production floor. Right? When you look at products in general, uh, you know, these are activities grouped by products. So that means if sourcing has to be done in Tesco's or Sainsbury, whether it's for, you know, rice or whether it's for vegetables or, you know, whatever milk. So the sourcing department is going to be productized. That means all the product managers, buyers, merchandisers, you know, uh, buyers and essentially product managers will be all under one department, which is product. They might be sourcing products which are for different departments within the organization, but they're grouped in a product category because all of them are going to be the chief or the key contact to be able to, you know, uh, look at importing products or buying products for Tesco to be able to sell into their stores. Is that okay? Customer would be, again, we are looking at grouping by customer activities. So here, when you look at customer services, when you look at people on the till, when you look at complaints, when you look at, you know, uh, even for the online channels, they'll all be grouped, grouped together because they are customer facing. That means at some stage in their operation or in their day-to-day -day routine, they will essentially be dealing with the customer directly. And then when you look at geographic, it is grouping of activities by territory. That means if you look at Tesco operations within the UK, there is a full department and from a CEO to down to the employee level, 
this department works within a particular geography and carries out a group of activities to maximize sales against as does in Sainsbury's and Morrison's and a couple of others. But it is a self-sustaining operation. Okay. okay. And similarly, we have process. So process here would be when you look at grouping the activities by workflow or customer, uh, you know, work workflow in particular, and that is where the process is. If you go to Tesco's and you, you bought a product and you want to return it, and you go to any of the Tesco stores, the process to take that back in terms of return is going to be absolutely similar across the 650 stores. Yeah. So they will not say that, okay, you know, I'll have to check with the general manager. No, I can't read. If it is within 14 days or 28 days, the product is something which is considered, uh, you know, if it's not a product which is uh, related to personal hygiene, that product will be absolutely taken back and the returns procedure would be absolutely the same across all the stores. Is there, isn't it? Is it okay? Yeah. So they can be grouped across, you know, by patient. So what I'm going to do is obviously skip through some of the slides and go to the second one, which is go through at a later stage when I send this to you. There is something called a matrix organization. This is a different type of structure. And the and the matrix type of organization is basically an organization wherein you get to the organization is structured into employees which are permanently attached to one department. But they might have something called an ongoing assignment in which they report to a project, customer, product, or any particular you know, head. So an example here would be, if to understand this better in terms of definition is, a matrix organization is wherein you are an employee of the organization, but because you're in a particular department, sometimes you're asked to work um, you know, for other department heads as well. So an example here would be that if you work within, say, um, uh, say for example, when you say when you work within, say, say you're working within, I'll pick up an example of Dell as an organization. Now, when you work within an organization like Dell, what is happening is you're working within the UK operations, and here your main role is you're in sales, but at some stage when there is an annual conference which happens uh, you know, once a year, all the sales employees of UK and Ireland geography will actually report into a vice president or you know, will have a dotted line reporting or working relationship with somebody who's senior enough who manages the whole geography. Right? Yeah. And this is, so this is an organization which you'll get to see is that the headquarter of that organization is in the US, but all the employees within a particular department, which is say for example, uh, the sales department, do speak to each other, uh, you know, across different geographies. And in some cases, they also have dotted line reporting to functional heads or, you know, people senior enough in the organization who manage a particular geography. And this is used with an example here in the slide is, if you have a, say, a president of an organization, uh, which is the president of Europe, <coughs> and if you look at GM, General Motors is a plant. Now, General Motors has operations, the head office is in the US, but they have, um, you know, various types of operations. They're not just into car assembly or car manufacturing. They also do, you know, electronic other products which are used within the aviation sector, the car automobile sector, and they also produce certain other products which are related to, you know, which are byproducts which are basically used in automobile or other forms of production, uh, car manufacturing. So here, the overall head of the operation is the president of the company, and then he manages four different divisions or four different types of businesses underneath him. And within each of these divisional heads, what you will have is a, a, a head for that particular project or that business. So within the general manager automation, automotive products, for example, GMS factories across the globe, they have 27 factories. So there are four factories in, 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 your, in, in the European geography. And I think recently, if you are aware that um, the UK operations of Vauxhall were acquired by Renault of France, the company. 
So GM has sold off their operations in UK to another company, which is uh, which, which basically operates the Nissan and uh, your new Renault brand. So here, the vice president of Vauxhall was actually managing all the factories of Vauxhall in four countries, in Poland, in Slovakia, in uh, I think in France, and in UK. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now, so the idea here is matrix organizations you will find in very large businesses. That's point one. Okay. You will find that these organizations will be multinationals. That means they'll work across a lot of geographies. And because the size of the organization is quite large, what they do is within their structure, they employ something uh, which is called the matrix organization. And that allows individuals or heads within the organization to be able to report into a different geography for the purposes organized on the basis of their function. Okay. A simple example that I would give just to make it uh, you know clear. If you have a Tesco store in London, one of the stores that you go to, now that general manager, the person who heads that particular store, as a general manager or as a director uh, for that store, is able to work with a regional manager who manages maybe 10 other stores in that geography. Right? Yeah. Now that particular store manager, for example, in Luton, also reports directly into the CEO of Tesco. But in terms of day-to-day -day operations, and management of, uh, you know, in terms of day-to-day -day operations and management of uh, daily activities, he actually works very closely with a regional manager who manages 10 such stores. So, you, so you see the difference? The difference is for any strategic decisions which are related to that store, the CEO might pick up the phone and speak to that store manager because that store's turnover on an annual basis about, say, is 100 million. Yeah. And is one of the largest stores in that re, uh, in in the country, so the CEO has access to that person, and indirectly the person can report into the CEO as well because it's the largest performing store in the territory, for example. But in terms of day-to-day -day operations and activities, things like customer returns, you know, things like discounts and other things, he is overseen in terms of his responsibility by a regional manager who manages maybe several of the other stores in that region which add up to a turnover of, say, half a billion. Do you get that point? Yeah. Now, the other form, uh, one we will look at would be a flat structure within the organization. Uh, if I can find it, I will just open it up. Give me one second. So sometimes what you, there is a crisscross of different types of structures which also happens. You will see a functional overlap with the matrix organization as well. And this would be in the case of Microsoft, for example, for as an example. Now, as a customer, when I see Microsoft as an organization, what I see it is as an organization which is product based. That means you have Xbox or gaming division, you have Bing or search division. You have Windows Mobile, which is a separate business. You have Microsoft Windows operating system, which is a separate business. And then you have Microsoft Cloud Computing, which is a separate business. Have you seen that? Or, you know, can you visualize it? Uh, yeah, uh, Cloud, well, I'm not really a Microsoft person, but I'm more like um, iOS and Android. Yeah, brilliant. So if you look at Google, for example, as a company, <clears throat> what you'll get to see is Google company. What you will get to see that Google is organized as a search company. Google is organized as uh, Android, uh, you know, a company which is to say that they think which is like uh, you know um, an operating system which is going across on a lot of other um, uh, mobile phones. Yeah. So if I have to look at Google from outside, I see Google as a search engine company. I see Google as a which basically makes and provides an Android operating system. Also, there's a company which has 
search engine and that is nothing for a company's perspective it is nothing but a product so sometimes you will get to see <coughs> that the companies externally are organized from a customer's perspective into product structures but when i go into the company you will find a google engineer which is working on search could also be working on maps could also be working on the android system yeah so do you see the difference so externally my perception is that the that the company is a product based company but I, when i work within google i might be an engineer working on three different codes with three different departments and working with three different project managers to be able to complete you know jobs given to me the same piece of product code which is used in maps could be utilized in search and could also be utilized in the operating system if that makes sense all right just quickly going through maybe i don't know what's wrong today but uh, this is second time it's happened sorry uh, just very briefly opening so as you know the presentation which i'm going to send to you would be to understand this so uh, the main idea that we want to look at is primarily how <clears throat> you know organizations are structured and how people within the organization uh, you know follow that structure so here we are looking at some key structures plot uh, you know structures which are uh, defined because of the span of control chain of command hierarchical delegation and empowerment and each of this we have covered but if you when i talked about it packard for example and i talk about product right now so this is an example of an organization that you get to see which is organized by product to be activity so there is printing and imaging group there is personal systems which is computers there is enterprise group which is servers there is services and there is financial services can you see that yeah okay then the other is if it is geographically organized an organization so you have unit packard which is the head office is based in us so you have unit packard americas you have unit packard operations in geneva in switzerland which is managing all the middle east europe and africa and then you have the asia pacific operations uh, based in hong kong and this is nothing but the uh, structure of the organization done on a basis of geography okay okay and then when what we do is we look at some we 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 can look at in particular would be to look at you know structures which are based on the type which we talked about here which is you know matrix and within a uh, matrix we looked at division and within division we looked at functional is that okay yeah this some one bottle so <clears throat> what we want is why we want to just look at studying these structures is that we want to understand in a later stage in learning outcome 2 how the structure of the organization affects and shapes of the culture within the organization so if it is a hierarchical organization you will normally see autocratic or control led uh, or you know uh, people wherein the, the role as uh, the sheer responsibility will actually be vested within the uh you know department head or the organization head and everything for decision making actually flows from top uh, from bottom to the top so when it comes to approvals when it comes to budget thing will go to the top in the case of democratic there will be delegation and what you will see is the day to day routine and day to day decision making which has to be done within the organization will be with the department managers and the supervisors and then we will also see that well here would be when you look at tesco stores in particular when you go and shop if there is a issue in one of the sections of the store 
typically you will see a section or a supervisor will come in and you know kind of deal with that problem so giving you an example earlier which i mentioned was that if you had to go and do a return you know that you'll go to the returns counter and one of the managers there who's deputizing as a manager on that day will actually take care of all the returns he or she will not need to speak or get authorization to be able to do a return uh, from anybody within the store and that would be delegation that you will get to see and that kind of a structure will basically or the leadership style would mean that it is more or less uh, democratic that means the person given the uh, position and the authority at that level would be having the powers to be able to make decision and his or her decision will be final okay have you seen that within the place that you work have what kind of structure do you have at the place of your work uh in what way uh, in terms of organizational structure well yeah there's there are different departments because it's a local government on Burton it's it's a council so we got like um recycling department we got social care which mm -hmm. is what i'm in adult social care mm -hmm. we got uh, social social care for children as well um right you got purchasing um you got it right. mm -hmm. so there's quite a lot of departments you got housing as well um and you got wow. benefits tax office right, okay. tax is okay yeah that's fine Essentially, what you get to see is that within the organization, uh, these events, or this kind of a structure is to make the operations more effective, to make the day-to-day -day activities more, uh, you know, achievable. And some of these groupings are also done from an angle that if these are things which are coming in on a day-to-day -day basis or happen on a routine basis, then there will be a set of people who would be much more uh, you know tuned and much more hands on to deal with those set of issues or problems and they'll be able to uh, if uh, you know manage it and then resolve it much more effectively so that is one of the reasons why this departmentalization has been done yeah correct and you you cannot and the other thing the reverse perspective would be or a flip side would be that you cannot have an individual or a group of individuals within the organization or a business who have expertise in every particular uh, area or every particular field. So in order for you to be able to look at effectively executing and meeting customers' demand or people that you interact with, what they do is they group you together in the form of the, uh, uh, in, 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 in the form of, you know, your speciality areas or expertise areas, and then they you are put into particular departments which deal with those problems as a problem uh, you know kind of a troubleshooter so you mentioned there are people who are in one of the departments which is like say for example the housing department now yeah. they would have some sort of experience or background from the real estate or from a state agency and things like that and they would be able to effectively manage you know accommodation or you know allocation of accommodation and living facilities depending on the expertise in that area isn't it yeah or somebody who's managing the benefits department has been working within the department for a number of years and is inside out aware of you know the key areas of benefits types of benefits uh, you know things like so he or she would be able to you know execute and effectively you know, work within the department to deal with those kind of issues on a daily basis. So, in general, what I want what I want to be able to look at today is that you know, uh, this session to an end. What we want to be able to look at is understanding people as a resource within the organization and how they work within the structure of an organization when it is formed, and then we will how communication happens between these structures. Today, what we've done is we've only looked at the organization structure, one task, which is task 1.4, nothing else. But okay. next, in the next one, next session, what we're going to be able to look at is structures. What we want to know is the, the type of 
control the structure exercise and how communication happens within that particular structure, within the employees, within the people working within that department. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. I'm going to try and send you this uh, presentation, but tailored uh, into a 12 to 13 slides, yeah. and then the 30, 35 slides it has, and talk about the organizational structures for today's session, and then attach a handout which will actually talk about, uh, you know, for which will basically give you a bit of additional reading for four or three pages, and give you one or two paragraphs on each of the structure advantages, advantages, and where do you get to see them as an example. Very concise. Okay. Perfect. Now, in terms of our next session, do you know when is our next session? Tomorrow, I think. Um, I let me have a look. No, I think that it's. I think there was the policy one yesterday, but the one scheduled for yesterday. I don't know. There was one scheduled for yesterday, but I think I missed out on that particular session. So what I'm going to do is, are you available tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. So t tomorrow, depending on you know my availability, what I'm going to ask is um, we will schedule this for uh, 7 again, just like today, if that's okay with you. And then we will basically catch up on this particular session that we do, uh, you know, for uh, we missed out on Monday. Okay. Is that okay? And then yes, what I'm going to try and do is do another session with you on uh, 30th and maybe do another session with you uh, on Friday. Okay. If, if that's okay. The reason is basically you know bring this unit to a lot of a quicker conclusion because in this unit you're looking at basically studying um, you know things which are more or less practical yeah and what I want to be able to do is once I've gone through a few set of presentations I want to be able to then uh, basically give you some handouts to study so that you can directly start firming up your assignment on this okay Okay, the reason reason is because this is more or less a very practical unit, and I think uh, from what we want to be able to do is, uh, you know, try and work along in this unit uh, from point of view, uh, you know, not just covering the unit but also covering, uh, you know, uh, the assignment. Let's take a different approach, uh, you know, as far as this particular unit is concerned, um, so that uh, you are able to, you know, firm and start the as well. Now, you get my emails or Hotmail as well now, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I know you have two emails, which is Google email and... Tomorrow, same time at uh, 7 p.m. and uh, 7 p.m. Yeah, that's fine. Wasn't okay in terms of audibility today and in terms of any distortion, wasn't there any distortion? Any distortions? Yeah, any any uh, you know disturbance or distortions in the session in terms of the voice breaking up or anything like that? Yeah, well, there's quite a bit here. Yeah. It was quite a lot, is it? Yeah. Uh, well, um, not as bad as it was at first, but uh, yeah, in this session there was quite a, a bit of breaking up uh, more than the last session. Right, okay, that's that's fine. So, in some cases, what I would want to do is basically, if you need any recordings of the session, then I can send you the recordings of the session as well, just for you to go, go, go over uh, in terms of at your spare time. Okay. Look at, but I think uh, considering that we, you know, normally end up sending you a slide or a presentation which is along with the handout, uh, that should be nice. Oh, okay. If you need that, do let me know because all some of you know some of the times I think some sessions I do end up not recording. 
because I, for, I forget during the course of this uh, class. But apart from that, you know, I can email them over to you for you to have a listen uh, at, a, at, a, at a maybe later date or a later time. Okay. Or just you know, something like that. <clears throat> so that's it for today, uh, Phil. Um, appreciate it.